Hi, my name is Vijay and I wanted to give you the top 15 EPL or SSIS interview questions. I wanted to give you all my 13 years knowledge on taking interviews or giving interviews in just 10 minutes. Okay, so let's get started. In this series, we are going to discuss many different questions. But in this part one, I'm just throwing out the first top 15 questions, which is a very common and base questions, which has been asked many times in many interviews of SSIS. Okay, so let's get started. So it is start with, can you explain what SSIS is and its roles in data integration, how it helps? So basically EDL means is nothing but extract, transformations and load. So it helps us to load the data from A to B generally from the different environment or maybe from different sources to the databases or maybe from databases to a flat files we wanted to export in for some other third party vendors or something right so it helps us for movement of the data also cleaning of the data and transformation also so it's a very much very much powerful tool now how would you handle the error handling and logging in ssi package so suppose there is an error in your CSV file which you are going to load the data. There is a double comma or there is an apostrophe or there is some special symbol. Due to that, your data flow task got failed. How do you handle those kind of errors? So handling error SSI supports so many things. We can save those informations, redirecting those information, you know, this logging information in text file, SQL Server, Windows log event. You see how much powerful it is. The next question is what are the different types of transformation available so here they are wanted to check your knowledge have you used all those tasks so they want to hear that okay if you say drive column conditional split look up aggregate merge pivot union all then they might ask you okay they might ask you okay what does the lookup do then then you can answer simply retrieves matching values from a reference data set so there are two tables we are trying to look from the lookup tables into the destination table. If something is found, we do some action, right? So these kind of expectations they will have when they will ask what are the different types of transformations available. Okay, so the next question is, can you explain the concept of checkpoints in SSIs and how they are used? So suppose, uh, suppose sometimes a server crash or maybe a job failed or maybe due to something, somebody stopped the job, right? And you have five to 10 packages, right? And you don't know on which step, which status at the what particular point that package has failed. Because if the package takes six to eight hours to load some data, then you have to start it from the beginning, right? So to avoid running from the beginning, you can use checkpoints. So the answer of this question is, the summary answer of this question is checkpoints, right? So checkpoint help us and enable us to keep the status and metadata. And we can also, Put that into a checkpoint file from there it will pick again the information where it has to get it started it will continue okay the next question is very much important question and asked in every interview that is my guarantee okay so the question is on optimization the performance this is a very common question suppose the package is running two hours then they will ask you what you have done what you will do if a package is taking two hours what are the steps you will follow how you can optimize it, what is the best practices you have followed in your previous project, right? So you can start with, you know, use appropriate data types to avoid unnecessary conversion. One side you are using where care and then and where care, right? You know, that explicit and implicit conversion. If you have not, go back and check my other videos where I have talked about those conversions. Okay. Now, the second point is buffer, right? So we can set the, adjust the buffer based on your package expected data, which will help you to set up some limit which packages handles in better way. If you define them, what's the buffer size going to be? And there's one more thing called parallelism, right? So suppose you want three to seven data flow will run together and load the data from source to destination. You can enable the parallelism. We have to enable it by default. It is not enabled. So it, with the, using just simple properties called mixed concurrent executables property, that's it. And then you are ready to parallel your package together. Okay. Now, what else? You can use the staging tables for intermediate data storage, right? Suppose you wanted to go from table A to table B. So why, why to do that, right? Use some intermediate tables where you cut down some data, where you delete, you apply some, maybe some additional, some drive column, some conditional split, something, right? You do all these things onto the staging tables, right? 
Also, the another few other examples are enable the package configuration to dynamically adjust the package setting based on the environment factors. Right? What else we can do? We can also look for profile and monitor the package execution using the logging and performance, right? To understand the bottlenecks and optimize accordingly, right? So there are a lot of strategies and a lot of best practices we have to follow. But hardly there are 10 to 15. If you are aware, you are good to answer any interview questions regarding the performance. Okay. Now, next question is, have you worked with SSIS package deployment and configuration? Here, they wanted to check, are you only part of the development team or you also have participated in helping a, a team who deploys and take care of, you know, when they move packages from one environment to another environment. What are the environments? They will queue a production, right? So, once developer is done with their packages, definitely this has to go to the production, right? So, how it happens, right? So the best way is SSDT, right? So even DBA, when you give it to DBA, they will open the SSDT and try to deploy, you know, right click and say deploy packages on the specific server. It's very simple. Everybody knows. But what is the other way around? The other way is using the deployment manifest file dot SSIS deploying manifest, right? We can generate this using, again, connecting to the MSDP, connecting to the SQL server agent, and then, you know, many other steps. Uh, when, we, when you have a project and packages, you right click, and you can export as a uh, deployment manifest file, right? Okay. The next question is, what are the different connection manager in SSIS? How would you choose the appropriate one for the specific task? Okay, this is a very tricky question. In that, they will say you have a CSV, or you have a text, or you have an Excel. Now, which connection manager you will you use? Or what is the better, right? So definitely, for SSIS has a so many connection manager, for a specific need, they have a specific connection manager, right? If you're dealing with the text file, use flat file connection manager. If you're using any other uh, databases, you can use OLEDB connection manager, right? And there is Excel also, ADO.NET, FTP also. FTP basically is nothing, but nowadays it has been, sorry, it has been replaced, replaced with now we use S3 for Amazon, we use, you know, uh, 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 blog uh, blog storages from uh, Azure, right? So now things has been changed. How people, how companies used to store the data. Now no more FTP, but it's still some client or some companies are still dependent on FTP, right? It's just downloading or keeping the data, you know, other than your, you know, uh, external resources or external source storages, right? They wanted to keep it, they wanted to access it and use it, right? So FTP used to be uh, the top on the, you know, in um, uh, last five years, before five years, you can say, after 2015, it's no more. Okay, so next question is, have you implemented package configuration in SSIS? How would you use them to make your package more flexible? Now, what is package configuration, right? So you, you can start saying it if you want to buy some time. If you didn't understood the question, you can start saying it. Yes, I have implemented package configuration. Package configuration allows you to externalize and dynamically modify the package setting, such as connection string, variables, and component properties. Without modifying the package, you wanted to supply something and you want package to act upon it, right? Then, then they might ask you some more question like project variable, and some other things, right? But you, they can try to drag you that discussion, but they, they simply ask you the package configuration. So you keep it that something you wanted to drive the values from the top and you want your package to use it. So this is nothing but a package configuration. Okay, so the next question is, how would you handle incremental load in SSIS? This is another, another tricky one, right? So there are a lot of things here they might uh, you might take the direction, the panel might take the direction of, you know, uh, slowly changing dimension, SCD. There are different SCD types, but you try to keep it minimized so that they can ask you more questions and you can avoid it because this is a very complicated questions for the experienced guys even. they Even experienced guys can't answer all five to six different types of SCD, right? But yeah, let's talk about what you can answer if they ask you about how do you handle the incremental loads, right? So you can start with to handle the incremental loads in SSIS. You can identify a column, a column which identify is if the particular record record in the sense when I say record, it means it's a row, right? So if the particular record of that particular column has been changed, is coming as a change when a new row comes, when updated information comes, right? 
So is there any column which gives us information about something is changed, something is new, something, you know? So if it is there, then try to hold on those columns and take action based on uh, only load the incremental information. Let's say you are daily, you get the employee um, login and log out information, right? There is a one file which will do on a daily basis, but this file generate as a fresh as weekly, right? So let's say when you do Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, uh, you know, coming days, you still have a Monday data. Now Monday is done. You you are you are wanted to load Tuesday data, right? It's still the Monday data is there. So you can simply put that your date condition into the specific column logging in, right? That is a date column. You can put that condition and then you can restrict the Monday data and only keep only take or fetch the latest data. So this is how you identify a column to load the incremental data so that you can only load the latest and new information, not the old information. It will and you will end up if you do that, you will end up duplicating the data right every time. OK, so you can you know prepare those kind of answers. OK. Now, can you explain the concept of event handling and exercise? When and why would you use it? Right. This is another interesting question, right? So it is start with event handling and exercise allow you to respond to specific event occurring during the package execution, such as if error happened, warnings, some information or custom events, right? Event handling is also uh, useful when you need to capture and respond to the specific condition, right? So it provides the flexibility to build custom logic and action to handle different events. Let's say you wanted to um, create an event when a package starts. You wanted to send an email that, okay, your load has started for the today. It will take six hours. You wanted to notify business. You wanted to take some action. You wanted to, you know, perform some event. So event also can be the starting of the your execution uh, before starting, after after you are done. So event can be any anything, right? So you can handle it. So there is a on error, on information. There are many, you know, on failure. There are many different uh, uh, events. Okay. So now next next is have you worked with exercise expression? Share some examples how you have used expression in your package. So now they wanted to they, they wanted to see your knowledge that have you used variables? Have you used combining multiple values and column names or something, something, and have you built some expression, right? So the best example to give is, you know, yes, you can say yes, I have worked with extensively with exercise expression because without it, you can't you can't say yourself that you are five years, six years, four years, right? So you have to accept it, right? If you don't know, you can learn it. It's very easy. They are used to dynamically set the values for package properties, variables, and component properties based on the condition and calculation. Some examples including dynamically setting the connection string or file path. So, okay, so here is the catch file path, right? So, suppose you wanted to export the data from a table to a CSV. Now, at the end, the uh, business understanding is you save that file with today's date, right? So, you have a file name but you wanted to append another variable with today's date, then you have to write a custom expression to fetch month, day, year, and then put in as a string and then underscore and append it as a variable. And then this variable will be treated as a file name in a connection manager, right? The connection manager, which saves the file, right? So this is how you can, you know, relate your, if you are, if you're worked as a POC or if you worked your own, whatever you can, you know, you can relate these examples hmm, when you when you explain uh, expressions. Okay. The next question is how would you handle the data cleansing and transformation? What tools and techniques you have used? So many people have used different external tools, internal tools, but what is available to the Microsoft? What is available to SSIs? Right. So data cleansing and transformation in SSIs can be achieved using the data flow transformation, data validation check, SSI, SSIS expression, external data quality tools, and data profiling techniques. If you, you know, if you do the foundation like that, you know, uh, they are not asking you the specific thing. But if you generalize your statement when they ask something, and then you give example, this is how your this is how your your flow should be when you answer it. Okay. So these are the things you can. Uh, Next is, can you explain how would you implement the package security in SSIs? Not every SSIs panel will ask because they even don't, you know, secure their packages. It's or, or it's they leave it on the OS 
security and implementation and the particular environment where they have hosted right so there is already a security layer okay but still uh, there are a lot of vs right and then you don't want them to see your uh, smtp password information your sensitive information something you know something that you need to execute some some calling some api with some username password or something right you want to store some sensitive information so how do you make sure that even your dba even your person who have access to the operating system can't access that you know that information from your package right so there is a already encrypted sensitive data we can do that we can enable this property and utilize the configuration right it's very simple okay the next question is have you used script tags or script component in ssis here they are trying to check your knowledge of do you are you able to write or you able to write some code if else while or some custom code some maybe maybe you are you have to deal with sometimes xml or sometimes a third party uh, foundation where you have to prepare something and send it json or something right so the custom code can be anything the demand can be anything from the business so are you willing to do it do you understand the c sharp do you understand the basic if else variable you know those kind of things so you they wanted to check your knowledge that have you ever touched this if you touch that give some example saying that yeah you wanted to check some uh, while transforming this data you wanted to validate some data which is coming from the source and before putting to the target you wanted to do something so give those kind of examples okay yeah. okay the next question is how would you troubleshoot and debug ssis packages share some common issues you have encountered and how you resolve them so if you have your experiences like uh, you struggle for some error and maybe the most common errors are thread file you know inconsistent data sometimes there is empty spaces empty lines the file is not ending properly and many different examples uh, when if you have worked in a real time 5 to 10 years right so you might face sometimes connection is not reachable sometimes the servers are down sometimes flat file is not proper sometimes number of columns are more than expected sometimes the data is too much huge that it's unable to load and complete or sometimes there is a time out in the connection sometimes there is a change in the column name right so these kind of questions and answers you know you can give based on your experiences which you can relate okay so Uh, in a generalized statement you can say to troubleshoot and debug exercise package you can you have to enable the logging use the breakpoint and data viewer so if you enable the breakpoints you can see the data which is flowing between your source to destination yes it's possible using the data viewer leverage the exercise debugging capabilities employ event handlers validate the component independently review the error messages right the common issue include the data conversion errors connectivity problems configuration issue performance bottleneck right so as i gave previous example try to add real time examples to your answer to your question okay. yeah that's it you can download our free app for the free sql course and free sql interview course and ssis and and so much more we are going to post free on this app you can download it thanks for watching